Hi, I'm Midnight Mule. This is Midnight Mule FPL and I got a cold. Feeling a bit rough, so if I pull strange faces during this, it might mean I'm about to sneeze, especially if the video suddenly jumps. It means I, I had to cut the video and paste the next bit onto it again. So, six teams aren't playing this week and I'm probably going to take a minus eight point hit, but I think I can justify it. So I'm going to show you my team and then you can see how I think I'm justifying it. Also in this video, I'm going to show you where you can get predicted points from. And if I remember, I'll try and explain when they're useful and when they're not. So I'll be looking at Fantasy Football Hub, Fantasy Football Scout and another one that's free. So let's look at my team and what I think I might be doing. Of my squad of 15 players, I've got six that aren't playing this week. They are Fofana, Chelsea, James of Chelsea. Lavia of Southampton. Southampton are playing, but Lavia is predicted to be out for maybe another month yet. Trent for Liverpool, Diaz for Liverpool and Darwin for Liverpool. None of them are playing. So that's marvellous. So best case scenario, three are going to be on the bench, three from 11. I'm going to have eight players playing this week. I do have three. I do have two free transfers, so I can do something, but I'm probably going to take an eight point hit. Lavia, I'm fine to move him on. I was perfectly fine to keep him until he was better again because I think he's a decent player. He's only four and a half million. I was fine for him sitting on my bench. But now that I've got another five players out, I'm probably going to have to let him go to move things about. I generally like to look at about six weeks at a time. So looking at Chelsea's next six weeks, you'll see from game week eight, they've got a blank, so no points. Then they're playing... Palace, Wolves, Villa, Brentford, and then they're home to Man United. So I think there's a reasonable chance that James, across those five weeks of the next six where he is playing, should get some return, some assists, maybe a goal, clean sheets. So I'm quite keen to keep him. I'm willing to let Fafana go, though. I'm willing to let Fafana go because that way I can have three playing defenders this week. If I keep Fafana, Trent and James then I've only got two. Looking at the Liverpool fixtures, they're blank in game week eight. And this is colour coded according to the official site. You may disagree with their rating here. Game week nine, they're at home to Brighton, which is potentially quite nice, especially as Potter's moved on. Game week 10, they're away to Arsenal. 11, they're away to Man City. And then they're home to West Ham and Forest in 12 and 13. So if I narrow it down to just the next four weeks, I feel it's okay for me to let some Liverpool players go, even though I actually still want them. I could probably get someone else in for those four weeks who's going to do better, even allowing for the four points. Now, there are some websites online, some you've probably heard of, another one you may not have, and there are lots out there that will predict the points. Something important I wanted to say is be careful with their predictions. Obviously, more often than not, they're wrong. If they were right, it'd be very easy to do very well just using the predictions. What they are quite good at, and all of them about the same, is over an extended period of time, they're quite good at predicting which player is going to do better than another player. So if I'm unsure which player to bench or to buy or to sell, I will let these be part of my equation when I'm thinking about it. But the absolute most important data point for me is what I personally think. So for example, in my earlier videos, I think the first two or three weeks, I kept playing Perisic when all the prediction sites were saying, bench him and play player X instead, whoever the other player was. And every time I looked at the prediction sites and I thought, no, I think Perisic could do better. And all three weeks that I did that, he did do better. So it's good for a guide if you're unsure, but don't take it as the gospel, not by a long way. So if I show you to start with Fancy Football Hub, I'm not affiliated with any of these sites. I don't get any kickbacks and I'll try and remember to put a link in the description for these three sites. So Fancy Football Hub, the way they work with Fafana, for example, I know you can't see that, I'll zoom in on that. If I zoom in on this section here, you can set up to the next, I don't know, eight game weeks or so. So if I look at game weeks eight to 11, and I'm on for Fana just now, they're reckoning he's going to get 11.8 points. So that's Fancy Football Hub. If we look at James, 
And this one's from Fancy Football Scout. That's what their website looks like. Now, their predictions, I find, generally are more conservative than the hub. So the hub will sometimes have a player getting 11 or 12 points in a week, where a scout would be more like, oh, they might get eight. Then also, the hub can go a lot lower than the scout as well. But again, if you're using the scout predictions against scout or hub against hub, it's okay to look at the relative scores. So if we zoom in on this area here, just so you've got more chance of seeing it, you'll see, for example, James, they're saying what score he gets for the next few weeks. And then I would add that up on an Excel chart. Something I like about Scout more than the Hub is I can copy and paste that table, put it in Excel and play with it quickly. Whereas the Hub one, it takes a lot of copying and pasting to do that. And I did actually write to Hub, email them and said, any chance you could put it in a table so I can put it in Excel? But they didn't want to. But the other side of that is with the Hub, it's a lot easier to apply the filters and say, I want this team or this player. So there's pros and cons to each. Of course, the most important thing is which one is most accurate. And I've not analysed it, but I just use it for relative feelings, I guess, of what I th they think may happen. Okay, here's another one. I spent quite a while trying to find a free one. And I am subscribed to the other two, by the way. It's my third season on Scout and Hub, I think. So it's fplform.com. So there's the link there. And this, I think, has the best filters. It's great. So you can filter by that team. You can filter by position. And there are other filters where you can filter by the next three boxes, say the cost. It's the probability of playing. So they can say, you can say, only show me ones that have an 8% chance of playing. And then there's also the official availability where they've already said they're not playing or officially they are likely to play. Now, because it's so colourful, I know it looks a mess, but once you get used to it, it's really, really nice. So I quite like this. And again, if you use it relative to see the algorithm behind this, which player do you think is going to do best than another player, it's quite useful. So here I filtered by Chelsea and Defenders. And something nice on here is it tells you the running total. So I can see game week eight. If I take the top one for Fana, on the screen it says game week eight, 2.2. No, sorry, game week 8, 0, they're not playing. Game week 9, 2.2, so it gives you the running total 2.2. Game week 10, 2.7, running total 4.9. So it shows you the next six weeks, but it gives you running totals, and you can add more columns to it. There's loads you can do with this. Uh, so looking at this column here, for example, that's the next four game weeks, what the players are going to get. So if we look at this in a table, Fafana looking at Fancy Football Hub, he's predicted to get 11.8 points. James, 15.2. By the way, I'm hoping none of these sites are going to say you shouldn't be showing these numbers because you're showing it to people that probably haven't paid up. But I'm also kind of thinking somebody might sign up after seeing this to see what's on there. So I don't feel too bad. Hopefully they won't get me in trouble for this. Lavia, 2.7. That's because they're guessing after another three or four weeks here come back. Trent to get 13.8 points, Diaz 12.9, Darwin 4.6. Now I disagree with their Darwin prediction. I think Darwin's actually going to be very good and I'm very reluctant to get rid of him. But as you'll see, I think even allowing for the four point hit, it's probably worth losing him as much as I don't want to. Now for the same players, Scout has for Fana 8.4, James 14.9, Lavia 6.4, Trent 12, Diaz 11.8, Darwin 11.9. So I tend to agree with Scout more on this when it comes to Darwin. They think they've got Darwin as the second best player of these six in the next four weeks. And I think that's quite feasible. Oh, third best, sorry. So James and Trent are the best two and then Darwin. And Darwin's better than Diaz. So I would tend to agree with that. They've got Lavia coming back a little bit earlier by the looks of it. And for Fana, they're less sure he's going to play. And again... I think they may be right about that. The trouble is we don't know yet what formation is going to get played by Potter. So he's a bit of an unknown there. And then FPL form, there's FPL forms numbers. And again, they've got Darwin playing, not doing as well as Scout, but certainly better than Hubble predicting. And they've, all of them have got James as the best player. And generally, Lavia is the worst player. Yep, for all of them, they've got Lavia the worst player. So looking at the average, 
And obviously to do this, you need to be subscribed to Hub and Scout, which means you give them money and form is free. Um, Lavia and Darwin are the worst, allowing for the cost of the players. Diaz and Fofana are okay. And James and Trent, I think I want to keep those because I only, I can afford to have two on the bench that aren't playing and just hope I'll be all right. So of these six we were talking about, James isn't in the equation and Trent isn't. So these four, Fofana, Lavia, Diaz and Darwin, I'm willing to move on if I can find something worth doing with them. So for simplicity, I'm just using Fancy Football's hubs numbers here, because remember, everything's relative. So Fofana is 11.8, Lavia 2.7, Diaz 12.9 and Darwin 4.6. Earlier in the week, I already swapped out Fofana for Trippier. Now, the, one of the reasons for that was because I only had two defenders. Given, I'm, given that I'm keeping Trent and James, I'm down to two defenders for the week, so I had to get rid of one, and Fofana was the one that I was least attached to, if you like, the one I wanted the least. And Trippier, he's probably going to be well okay this week, and the coming weeks maybe not quite so good, but he is highly owned. So any weeks that he does well and I haven't got him, that's quite a big hit and I can drop a lot of places. So I'm fine having Trippier. I don't know if he's going to be in my team for four weeks or the rest of the season. No idea yet. Now Darwin, even though I think he's going to do better than 4.6, I can change him for Mitrovic, who's predicted to get 14.9. All of the sites obviously have Mitrovic scoring more than Darwin. And Mitrovic's a lot cheaper and loads of, um, loads of teams own Mitrovic. So again, if Mitrovic does well like Trippier, then I'm going to uh, fall behind if I don't have him. So Lavia, if I do that change Darwin to Mitrovic, then Lavia, I can switch in for Madison. And Madison's predicted at 17.6, and Lavia, we can effectively, effectively say, gets nothing. So although Leicester haven't been great, Madison has been quite good. And if they score, then maybe every other goal, he'll be somehow involved. And Leicester do have a very nice run-up coming. And the final one is Diaz for Bowen. Now, Fancy Football Hub are predicting Bowen's going to get nearly six points more. What's that? 5.8 points more. A lot of people seem to be going for Bowen. And it's interesting. All the sites are predicting that Bowen's going to do well. West Ham do have a good run in. Bowen is a very good player. I know West Ham haven't done much recently, but if you look at their fixtures... They have had some tough games. So I'm kind of all right to do that. I've not decided for sure. That's the most dodgy of all these transfers. So the current predictions on Hub for those four players that I've currently got is 32 points. And over the next four weeks, the other four predicted to get 66. Now, of course, these are just predictions. And either side could be wildly out. And I'd have to take an eight-point hit. So it's 58 points. So if I do these transfers, and I'm more likely than not to do these at the moment, then my squad would be, I'd have Ward and Edison in goal. Obviously, I'd choose Edison. Then in the back, my defenders are James, Trent, Cancelo, Trippier, Perisic. And I'm happy with all five of those defenders. Middle of the park, I've got Odegaard, Martinelli, De Silva. So De Silva would be my one potential player who's going to play, who's going to be on the bench. Madison and Bowen. And up front, I'd have Jesus, Mitrovic and Haaland. Now, we know Man City and Arsenal, have, they're not going to be playing, I think it's game week 12, and that's six of my players. So over the next two or three weeks, I need to potentially move some of those players on. Or I may just decide to not be able to field enough players that week. I decided to get closer. But at the moment, the three Arsenal players I've got are all good players and they could all do well. doesn't matter who they're playing, they can still get good points. I think Arsenal are a good side. Those three players are exceptionally good, as is Saka, but we can only have three for a t from a team. So there we have it. That's my team. Um, <laughs> so taking a minus eight, I'm okay to take a minus eight because like I said, I'll take a longer view than some managers. Some FPLers online there say, oh, don't take a minus four, don't want a minus four never take a minus eight and this sort of thing because you're not going to get four points in the next week. But just look at a longer term. Over the four weeks, it's an all right thing to do. Yes, there's a chance any of the players I get in are going to get red carded, going to get injured. 
but looking at the probabilities, I think there's a reasonable chance that this is going to be okay. Now, the last few videos on purpose, I've not been saying like and subscribe because I thought everyone knows what to do. It's not going to make a difference to the videos. And, <laughs> and the uh, the subscribed actually flatlined. I don't know if it's because I didn't say it or if people are just getting bored of the old mule hat. But there we go. So if you want to like and subscribe, that's very nice. If you don't, that's absolutely fine. Thank you for watching this far if you managed to get this far. Thanks. Bye.